Two big announcements from OpenAI to digest today, apps and agent kit. So let me quickly break down in simple terms what they are, what you can do with them, what it might mean for the future of ChatGPT. So firstly, apps is the integration of external services like Spotify, Booking.com, Zillow, Canva. They can be called up within a ChatGPT chat. It's interesting because I think this is the third time that OpenAI has tried to create this app store type experience within ChatGPT. Do you remember plugins a couple of years ago? That was very similar to this new apps idea, but plugins went away because people just didn't use them. Then custom GPTs came along, which again is a bit of an app store type thing where people can create GPTs and then other people can find them and use them. So there's only seven apps they've partnered with at launch and they're soon going to add more like DoorDash, Instacart, Uber, and then at some point they're just going to open it out to anyone who wants to integrate their app or service. And the long-term vision is that ChatGPT will just be able to do more for you so you can spend more of your time bossing ChatGPT around rather than going into lots of different apps and websites to get stuff done. I'm personally on the fence about this. I don't have a massive desire to use Booking.com in ChatGPT. It's just a tab away, so I'll just use it there. And if I'm on mobile, I'm even more likely to use the Booking.com app. But I get why OpenAI want ChatGPT to be the place where you do more of your work and your tasks. But it's going to have to be quicker, easier, and it's going to have to work every single time if it's going to persuade people to do their stuff here. Also, I do think there's a bit of a clunkiness around having to think, is the app that I want to use integrated with ChatGPT yet? Again, it's probably just easier to use the service you want directly, but we'll see about that. The second big announcement was Agent Kit, a workflow builder where in this visual interface, you can create your own automations or agents. To keep this really simple, there are basically two sides to this, okay? You can build automations like you might do in Zapier or NA10, and there's quite a lot of commonly used apps that you can call up here and connect to each other, like connecting your Gmail inbox to your CRM system. And then secondly, you can build agents that act in a very specific way, draw on very specific business information or tools that you can serve up on your website or in your app as a chat widget to your users. So they're the two sides to it. Obviously, there's a lot more complexity to it. This is aimed at developers, but I'm just keeping it simple. It would be very easy for me to hype this up as an NA10 killer. I don't think it is that just yet, but it is interesting that we've now got OpenAI and Google both building visual AI workflow builders, visual agent builders. Everyone's trying to pile in on NA10 space because it's become so popular. So I'm sure NA10 are worried about that, but it really doesn't compete with Zapier, Make.com or Gumloop. Those platforms are great for completely non-technical people automating processes and workflows in their businesses.